Dudes, we win. You lost because you didn't go mech. Sucks broken, we have no guns. Pretty standard. All of you go for an old first drop harassment, but this doesn't apply. The key to success is building probes. Alright, hello everyone, and welcome to Decision Making the Show from Root Gaming. So happy to be here today. It is, of course, a Wednesday night, 10 p.m. Central Time. My name is Axel Toss, and we got a nice show lined up for you today, of course. I'm going to start out with the introductions of uh, the participants on this show, the guests that we have. First off, we have a player who is a long-time StarCraft Brood War player, stemming from his 2 vs. 2 days on IC Cup with teammate Druby. He's known for his popular stream and shows such as Inside My Head and widely viewed to have respectable knowledge of the StarCraft scene and community, with over 12 achievements on his belt since later 2010, as well as popularity as a player and respect for his analysis and depth understanding of the game. He's able to pierce into most minds of the players and extract general lessons for the community and aspiring competitors. He is Katz. Katz, my friend, it is so nice to have you on the show today. Are you having a good day? How's Heart of the Swarm, man? I'm having a great day, Alex. It's good. Dude, we'll talk was, about that. That is the correct answer because this show is going to be absolutely packed with some Heart of the Swarm discussion and awesomeness. Uh, but once again, welcome to the show. Next up, as I set your screen, oh, there you go. Wonderful, wonderful webcam there. I got to set that perfectly right in the middle there. Oh, it's so perfect. All right, next up, we have a player who's one of the few respected and, re and renowned North American Terran players in the community, recently qualifying for MLG winner back in February, as well as his qualification in WCS North America, continues to define his ability to both address the issues with each matchup, as well as be able to determine the necessary changes in both a player and the game overall. Uh, the premise of tonight's episode will be both an introduction and in-depth analysis of Blizzard's exclusive Star of the StarCraft II beta, Heart of the Swarm, and I think this paragraph deviated from Drewby's introduction and into an explanation of the show, but our next uh, player on the on the show is going to be Drewby. Drewby, how you doing, man? Oh, you have I'm to unmute your good, mic. Alex. There you are. What's up, man? I miss you. I miss you, too. We haven't talked in a while. I know, we had so much fun at MLG. I know, dude, we had too much fun. We shouldn't talk too much about that, though. People might okay. get jealous. Yeah. Let's just say there were a lot of ladies in our hotel room. Yeah. That's. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. We'll yeah. leave it at that, though, man. We gotta keep it a little bit mysterious. Said too much. I know, already too much. I apologize. Root sponsors, don't get mad at us for bringing all the ladies in. But, um, Jimmy, so happy to have you on the show next up. Carrie is the only lady I can think of. <laughs> Next up, a uh, very handsome man who probably gets all the ladies very easily. Dude, he's the most photogenic person on this earth. I'm not even kidding. Go check out the root photos. He's the second best player in all of North America, according to whoever wrote this paragraph. I'm not sure if he thinks that. Okay, according to Blizzard's WCS North America, a, co a constant participant in the exclusive North American Star League qualifier for IPL5 and North American representative for Blizzard's World Championship Series in China, he has a firm grasp on the Zerg versus matchups, as well as the extent of their reach, flexibility, and unit composition and weaknesses. He is Vibe, Dan Sherlong. That's an illustrious last name. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. And thanks for calling me photogenic. I appreciate it. Dude, you are. You can't <laughs> deny that. Can anyone in this call deny that? You can't. I'm sorry. <coughs> You've seen the pic. Everyone who's watching this right now, go... Where yeah. are these pictures, cats? Where are these pictures of this man? There's one on our know. Facebook. On the face on the yeah. Facebook. So facebook.com slash root gaming, just throwing out a guess. I hope that's accurate. It's like ridiculously photogenic SC2 accurate. guy. Yeah. I, exactly. Or just look at his webcam because he has it up there. Look at that guy. Nice <laughs> I love how the headphones kind of like there's like a nice little contrast with the like the background. It's all bright. Oh, I love it. Alright. Yeah. Vibe, thank you so much for being here. You are a scholar and a gentleman. Yeah. So good at the Zerg race and probably Terran and Protoss. But speaking of Terran and Protoss and Zerg, because he plays all the races apparently, he does more than fornicate mothers and female child guardians. He is a popular icon both for complexity gaming and as a starting member for Root Gaming, though mainly playing the Protoss race. His proficiency in both Terran and Zerg allows him to both understand and improve his game in accordance to the matchup. Maintaining rank in Grandmaster, Chad Jones continues to perform and represent Complexity Gaming in all North American major tournaments and lands, netting him a high level of respectability. Chad Jones, Minigun from Complexity, how you doing, man? 
Oh man, did he mute his? Did he mute his mic? Chad, you can't mute your mic. You gotta unmute the mic. You gotta <laughs> unmute the mic. I was just following directions. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> good, thanks. You see, you did better than cats. If anyone was here during the intro, I mean, I'll be honest, cats, you made me a little bit angry. But Chad Jones, man, you are the man. I'm so happy you're here with the nice. Uh, is that the complexity jersey nowadays? I keep forgetting what it's it looks no, like. Is no that? One that came out. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, man. I hope it's going to be available in stores soon. But yeah, guys, we got an action-packed show for you today. We're going to be discussing a lot of Heart of the Swarm and a lot of other things, but. Before we get into all that, a little bit of uh, announcement stuff, things you need to know. There is a Reddit thread. Feel free to go up with that so we can get some more attention uh, to this show. There is also, uh, we're going to be taking questions at the end. So please, if you want to ask any questions, tweet at root for root That's probably the best thing you can do. Uh, and we will look through those at the end. So again, tweet at root for root R-O-O-T, the number four, R-O-O-T. Uh, tweet at that, and we will try to get to your uh, try to get to your question, and then try to answer it. But um, let's just jump into it, guys. Heart of the Swarm literally just hit, uh, just just became available to play. Uh, I think it was yesterday, actually. Um, Cats, you're able to play. Actually, I think everyone in here has a beta key. All able to play, and I just want to get some initial thoughts. You know, there's a lot of hype going into this thing. Everyone's like, "Oh, Blizzard says it's coming out soon." When exactly is that? No one actually knows. And then all of a sudden, it comes out. We're all able to play it, so Cats, we'll start with you. What do you think of it, man? You've been having fun? Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, actually. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to answer the question, I suppose. Uh, it's, a, it's a really fun game, and uh, it's a new game. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's really exciting. As you said, it's only been one day. Yes. And we're taking advantage of that, of course, to talk about it. Of course, we'll have a lot of in-depth analysis of pretty much every unit, every strategy out there right now that we've been seeing. Uh, Drewby, Terran player. I know Terrans are yeah. a little bit happy about this this new expansion. Um, they've got some scary units in store. Have you been uh, laddering a bit on that uh, Heart of the Swarm ladder? Yeah, definitely. been laddering, like, all day since it came out. I slept for, like, four hours last night, got up and <laughs> kept playing, you know. I think it's safe to say you enjoy it? Oh, uh, yeah. I was getting pretty sick of uh, Wings of Liberty. Uh, you know, it's just frustrating playing against Zerg, and uh, now it's fun. Wow, well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, speaking of playing against Zerg, uh, Vibe, did you ever... Did you hit Druby at all in, in your ladder session on Heart of the Swarm? Uh, not in ladder, but I played him, like, once or twice in custom games. But I was really considering... Uh, Changing my race to Terran because I played a game against Fitzy and I, I was surprised at how good I played Terran, so. Uh oh. I might just have to go Terran now. You never uh -oh. know. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's important to consider, like, this is just yeah, the robot. beta. There, there's still a lot of changes that can still happen to this thing. So, do the people, like, really, like, smashing Blizzard or making absolute statements? Like, this isn't what we're going to see when the game comes out. At least, I don't think it shouldn't happen. This is just the oh. beta. Just, just testing going on, cats. I have something to say in Go that ahead. regard, though. Yeah. If people don't aren't vocal about like what's going on, then absolutely. they're not going to fix anything. So. I agree 100%. You should absolutely be vocal, but you can't just start smashing Blizzard saying, Wow, this game is terrible. Go die in a fire because this unit's imbalanced. Like, it's not going to be that like that for a long time. But definitely be vocal about your concerns, but be a little bit civil about it. At least in my opinion, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But the better way to get your feedback out there is to be somewhat you know, put periods there keep the lowercase letters there don't not, not all caps or anything but uh minigun i know you uh you're a fan of all the races at least in wings of liberty is there any particular uh race you've been sticking with in heart of the storm how you feel about the game so far uh just protoss uh it's it's fun you know new units are always fun uh haven't played too too much though not yet all right well that's that's fantastic um <laughs> You know, it's, it's it's such a, like, I honestly have only been able to play about probably two hours. I've been lending my account to people. Um, but, yeah, I, I agree. It's definitely a lot of fun, and, and with a lot of fun comes a lot of a lot of changes. So let's just talk about some, some general stuff. Before we get into every single unit, before we get into, you know, the changing meta game, what strategies are we going to see in the future, let's go into the little, the, the minor stuff. Now, I know I wasn't the only one who, who jumped into a game, and I'm like, I'm like, all right, it's my first game of Heart of the Squirm. I'm going to split perfectly. And I go to do it, and then it does it on its own. What do you guys think of that? Why, why, does, it, why does that happen? I don't know. I didn't like it at first, personally. But uh, realistically, uh, like at the pro level, everyone's going to be splitting anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's just less work you have to do in the beginning of the game. 
So I, I, yeah, I didn't like it at first, but I don't really care anymore. It's fine. Yeah, well, I Dad, know a lot of have... people have trouble with lag, like at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. So they, they might have done it for that reason as well. Does it seem like when I was playing a little bit, it seemed like my workers are just more optimal. Like they weren't dodging in between mineral lines as much. Is that just me? Uh, I, I don't know. Did y'all notice I that? I noticed that. No. I felt like I would, uh, my first few games that I had more money than I normally did. Yeah. Like I, I just felt like I had like maybe a bonus fifty minerals or something. Yeah. But yeah, me I too. Yeah, I thought so too. I, yeah, I think it's definitely more optimal. And then of course that that might open a discussion of okay, is this game becoming too easy? Like, is that considered dumbing down the game? I mean, a lot of people are talking about that on the forums. Like, it's, it, it seems like they're trying to cater more for the casual audience. I mean, I understand that, but as far as too much, are they getting to that point? Where is that point? Is, is that a game we want StarCraft to become? Yes. yes. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so, but at, at the same I think that's pretty insignificant, the, the worker split, the, the automatic thing. thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing a little, bit, a of little echo. bit of echo. Hello. Hello. I yeah, it's on Drewby. Yeah, yeah Drewby. I'll tr me and Katz will practice muting mics on the other person's talking. Oh, yeah, that's tricky. Of course, Drewby and Katz, as you see them in the screen, that's literally where they are next to each other. So you can envision that. If one of them reaches their arm over, can someone reach your arm into the other person's book? <laughs> okay, it's a yeah, little bit further. Back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit further, but close enough. You can kind of get a picture. Of course, Vibe, where are you currently residing? Uh, I'm in Colorado. Colorado. Miniguns in North... North Carolina. Carolina. North Carolina. Nice, nice. Yep. Um, so yeah, that was just one of the minor things. Anyway, did y'all notice anything else that was like different from Wings of Liberty as far as you know general changes besides just units that you've like has it actually affected you? I think the worker count yeah. on the on the Nexus. Mm. Yeah, I think Fitzy's the only person that's really gonna love that. <laughs> you oh, can turn yeah, that because he, he always though. screws it up. Yeah, you can. But why would anyone really like? Uh, I, I hate you new turn features, it off? man. I hate new features. I like living in the Stone Age. <laughs> just stay that way forever. That's fine. Once, once you're set in your ways, you're set in your ways. Yeah, yeah. It, it took me a long time to uh, turn on the HP bars when I was playing the beta. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just another one of those things where, you know, they're they're making it a little bit simpler, but... I don't know. It, it just yeah. depends where they stop. I don't know. I feel like I feel like that takes away from the game a lot more than the worker split does. <laughs> um, really? Just because you know, like it, yeah. I, that's I like feel a like skill takes, you have to have. Yeah, um, it's a skill. Yeah, exactly. It's a skill you have to have. Like you know how how quickly you can judge how many drones you have in a base while not you know delaying you from doing everything else. Um, there are plenty of players that have problems with that, and that's gonna solve it for them. Um, I think my saturation is pretty good for the most part. I take pride in that, so I don't like it. But you know, if I again, if I was like if I was Fitzy, I'd be thrilled. <laughs> Come on, guys! He's not even on the call to defend himself. Let's not <laughs> let's not take those cheap shots. I mean, take a shot at minigun. He's the one in complexity. Hey! Oh no! 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 Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we would right. never be the Chad. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean. You know, th like, is there a discussion of, like, skill cap? Like, obviously, as as these new features, whatever you want to call them, are added on that make it a little more simple, like, the skill cap is kind of lessened as far as, like, you don't need to do as much stuff to be really good at the game. But, I mean, at the highest level, like, they're all doing that stuff anyway, so it's like, I mean, I don't mind as much as long as they don't take it too far. I don't know what too far would be, but that's just, like, it's yeah. a discussion point. I think it's worth talking about. Um, well, yeah, I think... I think it's good. It gives me more time to uh, attack move my Warhounds, so... Oh, God. Yeah. Juby, hold yeah. on. W relax. Okay. We'll get there. I'm we'll sorry. get to your Warhounds, my friend. We'll get to them. I know <laughs> that's, that, that's definitely a hot topic, uh, you know, about Heart of the Storm right now. But uh, moving on, let's go ahead and talk about um, another general thing that, that has changed, which is, I don't know if y'all probably noticed this, when a, when a Terran player scans... It shows the what do you call it? The, call it? The, the ring. The ring. I know there's like a mathematical yeah. term, a geometric term for it. The circumference diameter. is circumference. circumference. Is that, is that what I'm looking for? Is that is that the perimeter? Way? The perimeter, something like <laughs> that. Um, well, basically, it shows what the Terran player can see. Have yeah. have, have y'all been? Uh, do you think this will affect gameplay? I mean, how do you think this changes the game? I don't think it'll change much, to be honest. I mean, for the most part. 
Uh, I, I guess the only thing it would really affect would be like Banshee in turn versus turn. That way you could like get just barely out of the ring, and then you know you're gonna be in stealth. But yeah. um, for true. the most part, I think like you're if, when you get scanned, if you have a stealth unit like let's say Dark Templar, you're just gonna run away. Like you're gonna run away to make sure you get out of it. So like people were doing it before. I don't think it'll change much. Yeah, me neither. And if you're you know if, you, if you're Terran, you don't hit. Are you gonna practice meeting you? Chewy, and if you're, mic. and if you're Terran, like, uh, you know, you don't really aim to scan. You just like kind of scan, like you don't, you, you don't really like. Okay, this. Okay, this right. is it. You know. I mean, I don't think it affects the Terran player as much as the person who's being scanned. Um, yeah. One other thing. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes when someone scans me, I'm like, oh, I don't know if he saw my cloak banshees or not, or I don't know if he saw my attack. And now, you're gonna know exactly what they saw. Exactly. So it's it's just different. I don't like, know. If I think that God, that that takes some mystique and mysteriousness out of it. Maybe like, oh my gosh, did he see my cloaked banshee? Like, or did he see my cloak tech? Should I cancel that type of thing? Um, or if you have a stargate down, like hidden in your base, like did he see that? Um, I, I mean, it might affect gameplay a little, but as far as that 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 mysteriousness, I mean, I think that adds a little bit of thrill to the game and excitement. So I mean, I'm not too worried about it but i could i could i could see the point of view of the players uh, of the people who are um uh, but yeah moving moving on um what else what else from the general stuff do you want to like i mean queued buildings i don't know if you all have tried if you all have, obviously you've seen it like the colors a little bit different i mean that's not a huge deal does anyone want to ring in uh ring in on that at all it's not a big deal to me it just like looks mm -hmm. weird but you get used to it hey is anybody using the uh like red like opposing no, colors. The health, the health bars? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh no. No. I uh, I had that on default because that's what it was on when How I first played, help? and it was really confusing. I yeah. understand it. It's so harder to tell, isn't it? Yeah. Because I'm like my probe is attacking the drum. I'm like I'm cool. I'm I'm chill. And then my probe dies. I'm like what? <laughs> I think it's uh it's it's deceiving, man. So yeah, I I changed yeah, I think, that. Yeah, I think it's not useful. All right. Yeah, I changed that. Up. Maybe in team games. I don't know. It is colorful. League of Legends people like color. StarCraft 2 sees uh, the success of that, so I don't know. More color, the better. But uh, all right, options uh, we have. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's there's a creep tumors that now. Um, oh, ten to eight. Good point. Yeah. Big deal. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's a big deal, but but there's there's details that go into it. Like you know which creep tumor is spawning which uh, which creep tumor. You know I I can't think of many ways that someone can abuse that, but I'm sure someone might be able to. As far wait, so, can you wait, what do you mean? Like which which tumor is active? You you know which tumor is spreading the creep. Oh. If you have four different creep tumors. Sorry, the a Terran will have Hellions and you'll see the, the snake starting and it'll you'll cancel because it'll die anyways, and it'll just like go kill the ground where it There's started two. from. That'll probably yeah. never happen, but that's like the only way I, I can that's, see that. Yeah, that's one of the only ways, yeah. That's it's sorry. pretty yeah. cool animation though. I'll, I'll trade. I'll trade. There's also the Infested Terran egg change, change its look. The Infested Terran egg looks sick, man. That, that new egg, is, yeah. uh, it looks really cool. It's like, like the little, it's a little balled up Infester. Yeah, yeah I, think it affects, I think it affects um, gameplay because it's like intimidating. You're right. I think Terrans are going yeah, to for engaging. Especially at the highest level, man. They get so intimidated by the look <laughs> of the units. It's a, it's a really good point, man. Um... What else? There's the there's the the check mark where you can unrank the ladder. Have you all been using that? I know Minigun gets scared of the ladder. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you've it been checking the hell out, out of that box, man. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think that's it's good for you know lower level players who are scared of losing. Yeah. A couple, play a couple of warm up yeah. games unranked. That's great. That's yeah. nice. You guys know though, is it only unranked versus unranked or? Can you still play against someone who's playing a ranked match? It's just who's I don't think count. so. I think it. I think it has to be unranked versus unranked. Because yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. know. For sure, though. I guess maybe. I don't know how the queue timer would work for that, unless it was just like you play anybody. I so think, there's no MMR involved or something. I think there's enough people playing the unranked that you know it'll match fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, and and I think it it tries to match you near your MMR. Of course, like I'm not a Blizzard insider. This is just like. 
Um, you know what I've, yeah, I don't what I've think, seen. I don't think it's going to be relevant for any like grandmaster players or like even high masters no. because I don't think there's going to be a lot of like high masters or grandmasters playing in that. I mean, it's because you, you feel know? like you're wasting your time at that point. You're like, oh, I want to yeah. rank up and get like rank one and not play games that don't count. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, or I, I don't really care about my ladder stats, you know. So unless I'm super tryhard, ah, super tryhard, right here. Sometimes I do that. I care. <laughs> My stats are so really bad. Care. Chad I Jones cares. Care. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah, lie, yeah. Chad Jones. <laughs> you know I you do. value. I'm not lying. All right. Do you I, like you... The, um, I can't see my losses. It's nice. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Is that still in effect for the... the it's diamond? anything below, yeah, anything below Master. It's still happening? Yeah. But it's the same setup as... Uh, what rank are you all, by the way? Just curious. In Harvest Room. Silver. Just Dude, me too! Did. Vibe! <laughs> no, get her. Five. You're I'm not? Kidding. No! <laughs> I'm kidding too, it was a joke. <laughs> Everyone gets I'm placed mas in... I'm uh, Masters. I'm Masters. I was placed okay. in Masters. There's no Masters. Yeah, it's I, impossible. Cats, can you... No, Dema Demaga got Masters can already, I think. He, just, played like, he played for like 20 hours in a row. Vibe, I hate it's you. A, it's a rumor. I know. I actually... Yeah. I, got, I got placed in gold. <laughs> and then I, I promoted to platinum. I let so Violet so use my account, so hopefully nice. he gets me to Masters pretty soon. <laughs> um, Chan, I heard you were placed in Bronze? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm unranked. Sorry. Why are you, you... You haven't checked that box yet. I told you, he would be the one... No, I was, I was playing custom games. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe it. Chad Jones. He's got one of those barcodes on the Heart of the Swarm. Six pulling everyone. <laughs> Alright, we know the truth, we know the truth. Okay. Anything else y'all noticed in the, just the generic, like, like, um... Mm. Um, can you select your units, like your fighting units now, or something like that? Much like your idol workers? I think that was oh, a yeah, thing, yeah, I yeah. didn't really... Yeah. 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 yeah, it seems useful, um, maybe. I don't know. Like I mean, if you can make it your own hotkey. You can change it. Yeah, if hey, you're pro hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Alex, oh. is your microphone muted or something? We're getting spammed. In the... Oh my god, Alex. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, you guys can guess That's what he was asking. Through are our you sure? It's fun that way. Wow. Are you... oh my... Wow. Oh my god. Uh, wow, he still hasn't. Had, wow, he still didn't unmute it. So, he's, wow. not, he's not even here. We're just kind of waiting for him to show up. We've been just talking to a ghost all this Why time. Why didn't y'all tell me? Oh my god. How, how are we supposed how did, to know? How did somebody just notice that now? Wow. Those were the sickest introductions. They were. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were. I, not the I put so much of my heart okay, and okay, soul no, into oh, introducing Chad oh, motherfucking no, Jones. They heard you. They heard you. Yeah, they did. They heard did you. They, Heard, Wait, they heard your introductions, apparently. Well, when did it mute? Only the chat, the chat told us pretty good there, though. That's when did it mute? This is bad. Some <laughs> magical button on my keyboard mutes my microphone. Okay, guys. <laughs> Those no, were the sickest introductions. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, just tell me they heard the intros. Like, don't they don't did, bullshit they did. me. Did they hear the intros? Because those were sick. Yes. yes. Not just for me, but for y'all. Like, I, they, I they were promise. sick. Okay. I promise. Jeremy, I believe you, and I'm not going to look at the chat. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know what y'all missed. I don't say anything important anyway, so hopefully you heard these guys. But okay. Okay. Uh, apparently my mic has been muted for who knows how long. Um, on. We were talking about the... You can, hot, you can like hit your... You can hit a button, and it controls your entire army, which is... I think it could be relatively useful. Um, yeah. Anything else? Anything else? I think Goody's going to like that. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Whoa. Oh. oh, my bad. I don't know what you're implying okay. there, man. Um, all right, Chad. I know you found something. Huh? What do you mean? What What unique thing about Heart of the Storm was like? Oh, wow, that's cool. They didn't really notice. Or Are that. Are you trolling me? Because I, I don't remember. Really, Chad? You haven't played enough, man. I'm sorry. It's okay. I forgive you. All right. Should we just jump and eat a discussion? Yes. I think we're going sure. to. So, with the okay. introduction of Hearts of Swarm, or of Heart of the Swarm, K 
came the introduction of a lot of new units. Um, unique to Heart of the Swarm. Not in Wings of Liberty. And now we're going to go through them. And we're going to see what's up. We're going to start with Terran. I hope you guys aren't uh, opposed to that. Because that's how it is on my images. It's not any particular bias or anything. And we're going to start with the Widow Mine. Is that what it's called? Did I, did I, did I say it correctly? Yeah. Okay, the Widow Mine. Cost, 7525. Supply 2, Requirements, Factory and Armory, Build Time, 20 seconds. Damage, 160 Primary, 35 Splash, Damage, DPS, not applicable. Range, not applicable. Shields, Life, 90. M Speed, which I assume means Max Speed, is 2.81. Movement Speed? Movement Speed, what? that's what I meant. <laughs> Wait, would it have Max Speed? I don't know. You know, it's M, I don't know. Can you leave me alone, cats? I'm sorry. So, that's, um, I that's guess when the it's most driving in fourth gear. You know, we're gonna switch around a little bit. I'm not gonna start with the Terran player on this. I'm gonna start with Cat's yeah. vibe and minigun. Ha in any of y'all's Heart of the Swarm matches, have y'all ran into this pesky little critter, and have you lost a significant amount of army as a result? Is that the question, or should we go into? I don't know. I have a lot of a lot to say about the unit. It's, I guess that's the question. You can't dodge the question. Okay, well, I'll have someone else start then. <laughs> I'll start. Um, it's I have only seen it used like twice, and since I've seen it used, I haven't really seen the game get completely changed by it. Like, I haven't lost a lot of units to it. It's more or less been like, I see the Widow Mines when they're out already. Like, if, if, uh, if the Terran's like, trying to push out on my side of the map, I'll see the mines coming at me, and then I'll just know, okay, there they are right there. If they disappear, they just burrowed, so I know where they are, so I can avoid them, or I can get detection and deal with them later. But on the other chance, if like he's using them defensively, and I don't know where they are, and let's say I don't have detection as well, and I run through them, what I've seen so far is like either one of my roaches or lings will just run through them and like take the hit. Like I haven't actually seen it against my mutas or anything else like that, but I've only seen it used against lings and roaches, and for the most part, it killed barely anything. Like it killed. Uh, like it does have a, lot, a good splash where if it really got a good connection, it would kill Zerglings like a banding would kill Zerglings, but I guess in the game I played, it really didn't get a good connection at all. So it was like, it killed maybe less than 10 supply for like two or three mines. It was really crappy. But I could, there's a lot of potential for it though, because it does a lot of uh, single target damage, and then like I said, it does 35 splash like a banding. So... Depending on what locations Terran use it in, it, I could see that unit not being bad. And the fact that it can also be made out of a reactor, it's pretty good, too. Yeah, so, like, to, to clarify for anyone, you, you build it out of the factory and then you send it. You, you, make it. you make it move to wherever you want it to be and then you burrow it physically. Um, Minigun, do you have any experiences with, with the Widow Mine and have anything to add? Uh, just PVT. It, it seems pretty bad in PVT. I mean... At least from what I've seen. I mean, I feel like you'd typically get an observer with your push anyway, and you'd see it? Or is yeah, it, is it exactly. one of those things where, like, you don't care if it I hits mean, you? Pro because... uh, you definitely care, but, I mean, Protoss always has more than one observer against Terran anyway. So. Alright. And Katz, you had, you had thoughts about uh, the Widow Mine? Yeah, yeah, I actually have a lot to say. I think it's a pretty bad unit from my experience so far. I think it has... A lot of uses though, and uh, who's typing right now? Oh, can you hear that? Chad, my that's so rude, Chad. Chad, that's so rude. Sorry. Can we? Can wow. you are boring me. Chad. Oh, oh my god. god. You're, you're out of root. You're out wow. of. You're out of root. Sorry. Oh, oh no. My god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry for that Kay. disturbance, cats. I kicked right. him from the call. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I think they're pretty expensive for what they can do. I think they're extremely circumstantial units. Um. And having said that, like you know, like I, I don't, th I don't think you should do a strategy involving widow mines for the most part. I think you can react with them pretty well, though. Uh, say units that are like you know really fat, like Bridlers and Ultralisks and uh, Void Rays and that sort of unit. I think that's how 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 you should be using widow mines. Uh, I think they could be really good at defending all ins if if you already have all the tech in place. Because their build time and no one has touched on this yet, but like, you know, it's only 20 seconds, and that's really fast, especially because you can build them off of a reactor. So I think they should be reactionary units, and I think you should use them. For ex for example, I think it gives the Terran potential to do things like base trade now, and you know, just like make a crap load of widow mines back at home, and you know, like, because when you're base trading, 
uh, kind of like when, with Zerg, when you, when you make a, a, a crap ton of banelings and then you like base trade and force your opponent to just like rush in your base. Um, I think you can do the same thing, um, replacing the banelings, mm. you know, by, by Widow Mines. So I think they have a use in the late game against fat units, and I, I think they have a use against all lins, and I think they have a, a very good use in base traits. But other than that, I don't think, you know, I have yet to see a, a strategy that revolves a, around them. They seem really uh, unreliable in every other aspect. Can they go in metabacks? I don't know. Yes, yes. Juby, we haven't talked about these these creatures yet. Why don't you explain? Uh, have you been able to use them? Uh, have you been able to use them at all? And have they been uh, effective for you? Yeah. Um, first off, the chat's complaining. They want the uh, the cams back. Oh. They're sick of looking at widow mines. Um, okay. Uh, so widow mines are two supply, and they're really expensive. You know, they do a lot of damage, but realistically. The splash damage isn't going to kill any units, so, I mean, what can they kill? They could kill a Marauder, a Stalker. I don't think they're really cost-effective against big units, and then since they're too supply, um, I don't think that they have any place in a maxed out army. Uh, I saw a Major use them, just kind of placing them around maps against in, in, diff in different lanes of attack, you know, to see if his opponent's moving around the map or anything. So I think that's a good way to use them. But late game? Also, yeah, I, I think they're really bad. I, <laughs> I just won't make them. There's a couple of situations where they're good, like what Kat said. You know, they build really fast, so if you find yourself in a lot of trouble, you can just spam them and build them really fast. And uh, maybe if um, your opponent goes Mutalisks, uh, you can build a turret and then drop down two Widow Mines right next to the turret, so then the Mutal will come in and stack up to take out the turret and the mines will pop up and splash all of them. So, but other than that, mm, I don't. I don't think they're very good. Maybe against like broodlords, you could uh, you know just plant them all over the map. That would that would be kind of like base trading though. You know, you you send your army around, dodge their army, and they try and go kill your base, and you just burrow a hundred mines. <laughs> but yeah, I don't like them. I hope they get buffed. I don't think they should be too supply, and they're too expensive for what they do. How much are they again? I just I had it up for like a million years. Is it seventy five twenty five? Yeah, seventy five. Yeah, 25. yeah. Yeah, that's that's fairly expensive. I mean, I thought it was really cool. I was watching that game, uh, Major against Faith. He like put he put one of the the mines on the left side of the map, and then one of Faith's uh, oracles flew over it and it just popped out of the ground and smashed it in the face and it, and it died. <laughs> so like one oh, widow yeah. mine uh, you know it saved his his his, his mineral line, essentially yeah so. that was awesome it was yeah. just luckily it was right very spot. lucky but it, it was pretty cool to see um so yeah, they do fit in medivax is there any any way you can go after the mineral lines of your opponent with these things no i've tried dropping them uh they take like five seconds to burrow so by the time they're burrowed there's units attacking them and killing them, and uh, the workers are already long gone. So, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're muted. Cuts. I think I think to like sum things up about widow mines. They cost the same as a baneling, and they can't move as fast as a baneling. They can't move. They can't attack if they're not burrowed. They take a long time to burrow. So, they're I more think they have uses, but yeah, baneling. they can attack air. That's that's the only thing. No, they're not. Oh Banelings yeah, they are. Banelings would be well, yeah, barely more expensive. Yeah, banelings are half a supply too. Yeah, banelings are half a supply as well. Yeah, banelings I guess are. And banelings 50, come from the, from the zergling, whereas the widow mine you have to make factories for that. Um, yeah, f f fifty twenty five versus seventy five twenty five, and I think it's worse than the baneling in every way. All right, so so general consensus is that the the widow mine needs to be made a little bit better. Oh, somebody had a good point in chat. It said they kill dropships in one shot, so maybe against war prisms or medevacs, it'd be good. Oh, that's actually a great point. Great point. Let's mod him. Who, who said that? Said that. <laughs> that guy gets that guy mod. Gets mod. Juby, say Juby's his name on stream. on stream, and I can hear myself, and I kind of like it. I got it. I got it. Naked Surfer. <laughs> Naked Okay. That's a good name. All right. Yeah. Any other thoughts on the Widow Mine? I, uh, so I, I, get, I hope they get taken out of one supply. All right. So general consensus is they need to be improved a little bit. So moving on. 
this is the unit that a lot of people are talking about. It's pretty good, some, some people say. And now we're going to get your thoughts. It's the Warhound. Cost 150, 75, supply 2, requirements factory and reactor. Build time 60 seconds, damage 23 with haywire ability 30 to oh, You, you, you put, put the, the widow mine picture, yeah. yeah. Oh, did I? No, I, I took it down. I think there's a little bit of a stream delay. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, DPS 1.3, range 7, shield life is 220 with one armor, and uh, movement speed is 2.81. And in the green, we have a good unit. Minigun, I, I was watching your stream a little bit. You were dying all the time to these things. I, I hear you don't like them. She lying. <laughs> I know I'm lying, but give us your thoughts on the Warhound. <laughs> it's way too good. Way too, way good. too good. Yeah. Why, man? Good. Just make a zealot. Oh, I was talking about against other races, like oh. TBT. Now, Major was telling me that he was just using tanks and he was using standard Wings of Liberty stuff. Well, he was saying his opponents weren't making tanks at all. I think a good mixture of tanks and Warhounds. Probably so tell good. me about your encounters with the Warhound in PvT. Non-existence? What? You just haven't played against them? <laughs> no. Well, you are... I've been, play I've been playing with all the races. Okay, so have you ever used the Warhound in any of your matchups? Oh, uh, once. once. Yeah. Have you like seen I said, them? I haven't actually played that that much. But... Fair enough. Uh, Jerby. I saw yeah. you... I think you, like, you did a one-base... Warhound rush against the Protoss. TT1, I think it was, or Faith, one of the two. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you can do like a one racks factory and then expand really fast and just pump Warhounds off uh, one factory, and you can move out and harass your opponent with them. It's really strong. Um, yeah, I don't know. They move so fast across the map, you can kite with them. They're pretty good. And uh, they're also only two supplies, so late game you can make like 50 of them and still have other support units so yeah they like if you have 50 warhounds i don't think any ground arm unit ground army composition can really deal with it that well as long as you have the proper support for them yeah They're pretty good maybe a nuclear strike um but yeah i mean I, i've been watching a lot of streams and it seems like it's tough to find something to go against these guys. Um, they definitely do pack a punch. Uh, Vibe, you got any, any thoughts? Have you had any ZVTs against these guys? Yeah, I've had a lot of them. <laughs> Every turn goes mech now. <laughs> they just make Warhounds and Battle Hellions. But uh, I don't know. Like, I feel like uh, one thing that really beats it really well early game when there's not a mass of them is just speedlings. Like, uh, so a lot, a lot of turns lately that I've been playing have been doing Warhound rushes pre-Hillion. Like, they'll send maybe, like, four Warhounds at me, but they'll send them, like, the first one, and then they'll queue up a second one, and they'll go up to, like, four, and they just try to pressure. But if you just open with Speedlings, it's really easy to stop. Uh, aside from that, though, I think that unit is extremely cost-effective. Like, it's, it's, it's a good way for turns to, like, bulk up their army and make it extremely effective for the amount of supply it takes. It is a little expensive for a two-supply unit, it's a, I believe it's like 150, 75, like a, the same price as like a Viking or something. But yep, that's what it it's is. like each one of those Warhounds has 220 hit points and it does 23 damage by default. It has a really quick attack speed. It's like 1.3 and then yep. it has seven range. Yep. Seven range is kind of yeah. insane. And it has so the it, bonus attack too. Yeah, I don't have to deal with the, uh, the mechanical attacks in some sort, but... Like, just the fact that that unit is, like, it hits really hard, it has really good range, and it just can it has the ability to kite really well. It can get kind of out of hand, and I feel like once you get to a point where um, the Terran has kind of, like, a really sturdy ground army, you need air. Like, you have to go into Needless or something to deal with it, because just straight up sending roaches at it, especially if they have tanks supporting it, or Battle Hands, and, then, like, Battle Hands also is what counters Lings instead of roaches. But I feel like you just get wiped out if you have a ground army against it once it gets past like 150 supply. So you have to go air. Cass, that's pretty much it. Cass, do you have any thoughts on that or on the Warhound in general? Oh, he's muted. Let's see how long it takes until Whoops. he uses it. It's okay, man. I think it's, uh, I think it's one of the better units on Hardo Swarm right now. Um, the DPS is pretty ridiculous. The range is pretty ridiculous. It's pretty fast. 
So what Vi was saying is true. You know, like you you can counter it with speed links early on, and early on is a big thing right now because, like as Vive says, like Terrence will start like rush into battle hounds, and like as soon as a battle hound gets there, say you don't have speed links, there's no way it cannot be cost efficient. It will beat a spine crawler one on one. It will destroy queens. Oh well. Um, it won't. No. Are you spine sure? Color, spine crawler beats sore hands. I love how they're looking at each other on stream. <laughs> yeah, they're really looking at each other. What? Well, it's pretty close. I don't know. I've only like. Even then, like the spine crawler, the spine crawler timings for Zerg are, are usually like much later than when the first warhound arrives, and the speed for Zerg is usually much later than when the warhound arrives. So I think the I think we're gonna have to adapt a lot, just uh, just to counter this single unit like early on. Um, I I think that warhounds in combinations with things like uh, banshees are gonna be really strong because warhounds are really good at, at attacking at like destroying queens. Um, I actually played with warhounds against Prodos and it like wrecks stalkers and probes, um, like with the anti mech ability thing. I can verify that as a Prodos player. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's too good. Yeah, yeah. One other thing, uh, the the anti mech thing, it cuts through the hardened shield of immortals. Which I don't know if, I mean, if you have like four four uh, warhounds, they'll instantly take out the shield and then they can like two or three shot the immortals. It's wow. it's pretty awesome. That's not that awesome, man. It's awesome for me. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, uh, in general, it seems like the Warhound is, is definitely a scary unit. Um, at least if we're, if we're comparing it to what people are saying about the Widow Mine, there's a lot more um, emphasis on the brutality that is the Warhound. So general consensus is it's 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 pretty good. Do any changes need to be made to it? Uh, I think yes. if they keep the unit as the way it is right now, stat-wise, I think they should just bump it up to three supply unit or something because. Or yeah. they either that or change one of the stats of that unit because right now it's for a two supply unit, it gets ridiculous at a certain point. Yeah, it's kind of like two Marauders. I don't yeah. know, it has double the HP of a Marauder, like the same DPS as it has against armor plus the bonus. I don't know. I like it. The and it, under, and it comes out of a reactor factory. No. no. You know, no. It's tech lab. Tech lab? Why does it say reactor on the image? Uh, I don't know. Someone gave me the info there. Okay, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, wait, that'd be. A yeah, it's a tech lab. So yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, I think it's like, you know, it's it's a new game, and and we'll always say that it's a new game. Like we like, you know, obviously there's gotta be changes that need to be made, blah blah blah. But like, shouldn't complain too much about balance, and like, let's see how the unit works. But uh. At the same time, like realistically, like the Cirk, for example, has absolutely nothing um, for you know, like from Heart of the Swarm to account in the in the early uh, and even like the start of the mid game. You know, you can't make any new units, so you know there's there's not going to be an, an easy counter to this or or a counter that you know we we just haven't thought of yet. So I think it needs to be fixed a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no. Like, ideally, what unit would you want to have out against this thing, as a Zerg player? Early on, Zerg players. Mushroom heads. Yeah. Mushroom heads. <laughs> well, well, we'll get to what that means a little bit later. Um, okay, but I think Zergs are too used to uh, playing how they were playing Wings of Liberty, and to get Warhounds out really fast and like do damage, the Zerg has to be playing really greedy. Like, if the if they just make two spines. And the Warhound doesn't do anything. The turn's gonna be down. He's gonna have 30 SVs, and the Zerg's gonna have 50 drones, and they're gonna be way behind. Only um, until you have two Warhounds, and then you can kill two Spines. No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> and by the time you get three Warhounds out, then the Zerg's gonna have Transfuse, and and Queen's doing damage too. So I think that before they say it's the balance of the game, the Zerg's have to adapt. And thanks for muting your mic, Cats. It's okay, I'm done talking. You can unmute it now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alright. Anything else on the Warhound? <coughs> Last chance. No. No. Uh, Alright. I, I think it's probably... Wow, that's threw something at me. I think it's probably going to end up being 3 supply. But yeah, I think that'd be logical. I hope not. Maybe they should just... 
take away some of the HP or something. I don't know. Just make it a melee unit. It is. Uh, there's actually a different animation when it's. I know. That's why I was like saying it. that. It like drops the hammer in melee or something. Does that change its effect? Like its damage? No, it's the okay. same thing. No, no, it's the same damage. It's pretty. Fancy. It's still OP as hell. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll get to the Zerg changes later, Bob, I and mean, you can have your chance to, to <laughs> talk it up. Sorry, man. Just make Zerglings so you own it. All right. Speaking of Zerglings, Battle Hellion. Cost mineral status 100 <laughs> minerals. Supply 2, requirements factory. Build time 30, damage 10. DPS 1.9, range 2. Shields life 135, max speed 2.25. So this is basically what the Hellion has the option to transform into. I, I, as far as I understand, there's no upgrade that's required. There's no nothing you have to do to, to make this happen. You just have to click a button and it morphs into its, the battle Hellion. Um, now, obviously, you know the times you would use this. I guess is when you you don't expect to be markering a lot with your with your Hellion, like perhaps at mineral lines. Um, you know, there's a video that was out a little bit earlier, or I think it was like two days ago, where like a bunch of Zerglings were sent at like five battle Hellions, and they all just roasted away. Um, so, who are we gonna start with? Uh, cats. Let's let's start with you. The battle Hellion. Um, is this thing as scary as it looks? Uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 obviously a good unit because it can't it can't possibly be bad because it doesn't require any upgrades from Terran. You know, it's like okay, you you already have your Hellions. Mm -hmm. Now you have the option in, to transform them into this, so it it can't possibly be a downgrade. Um, it, it can only improve the Terran composition. I think uh, Olins are going to be extreme extremely strong with them. I think in combination with Warhounds, you know, like Vibe was saying, like the counter to Warhounds are Lings. Well, these guys are pretty good against Lings. So, uh, you know, Warhound Battle Hellion instead of Marauder Hellion, it's like 20 times better. Um, and those Olins were already pretty strong. So, I think that's going to be really strong. Um, it's, it's a great unit. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's, it's free. You know, it's... It's just an I added think it, utility. It's like, it's, it's, it's just a bonus to, to the Hellion. I mean, it's not like... Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, th I think it maybe should require an upgrade. I don't know. I think it's it's a good addition to be honest to turn um, early game. I think the Warhounds and Overkill. I think the Battle, battle Hillion could be like, a, you know, a good addition to change the meta game. But I think together uh, they're a little bit too much. Yeah, I mean, anyone else feel free to chime in. Uh, uh, Drewby, have you been able to to utilize the Battle Hellion to? Uh, resounding success at the at the cost of, of perhaps dying drones and probes. Yeah, they're really really good against zerglings, against everything else. Almost everything else, regular Hellion mode is better. Um, you know they're they're pretty good in drops and stuff, but like they're so slow and they only have two range that your opponent can just run their workers away really easily. So I think that in most situations. Uh, yeah, just the regular Hellion mode is better. Maybe against Protoss, if they have a lot of Zealots, you can go into battle mode, and uh, they'll tank a bit more damage and slash more. But, um, yeah, I don't know. They're they're good. They're fun. Um, it, it adds a bit more complexity to, you know, the turn army. You have to decide if you want to, which, which mode to put them in. So it's cool. Speaking of complexity... Chad, you uh, <laughs> you were gonna say that. God, coming. Chad, did you uh, have you utilized this unit or gone up against it and found it to be incredibly annoying? Uh, yeah, it seems to be only useful against Zerglings, though. Like they were saying, I don't see any other reason why you would ever. You guys need to them. like broaden your horizons a little bit. I Come know. On, we could well, there's, there's just right. no other reason to do it. Vibes there got is, something. There is. There it's not our go. fault. Here it, we not go, only, it not only makes the Hellion go from like a fast harassing unit to a slow tanky or a slow unit with like more arc of splash and stuff like that, but it adds on 45 hit points to the unit as well when it goes into the battle mode. So that changes a lot of um, like the composition style where or in, in terms of how long it can take for your other units behind it. So. Like even if you're not against, uh, if you're not even against like lings, you can turn your if you let's say you have like Hellion tank and uh, Warhound against like a Roach composition, and let's say twelve of your Hellions are now Battle Hellions, and that's forty-five hit points times twelve. That's a lot more hit points that the Roaches have to chew through, 
just to get to the rest of the army. So it's pretty a big deal in my opinion. In terms of just like, it, it, like it's not only against like Roaches as well. Like you could look at it against Protoss too. When Protosses are charging Terrans and they're just and the Terrans are trying to kite away, now you can actually just like, again like take all those Hellions, get the more hit points on them, and put them in front, and you have just you, the rest of your big damage dealing units in the back, like your tanks, your Thors, whatever you're gonna use. I don't know. Like the you might actually like Mech is gonna be viable now against Protoss, I think, because of just how beefy your army will be with all these units. So. Are these, are they like, really, how good are they against Zealots? Has anyone experimented the, with that? The arc of Splash is really big. It like hits the units not only in front, but also to the left and to the right. So it hits like an arc that goes into like threes. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. at least. It's like a yeah. semicircle. Juby's like yeah. been smiling during this degrees. whole segment. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good. it's good. I like them. Wait, how does it go, Juby? Uh, no. Oh my God. You can't trick me. <laughs> I almost had you, man. Um, yeah, almost. All right. Anyone have any additional additional thoughts on the on the battle, Hellion? Mm, I agree completely with everything Bipazet said as well. Fine. I mean, yeah. I mean, if if you, if you, yeah. if you're moving your army, you don't need the Hellions to be fast, and there's no reason to not have the slower, chunkier version. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Here, it's. I, I think. Agree, uh, like, sorry. Ahead. Um, I just think everyone's like crying OP right away and everything. You know, they're different. They're a lot easier to use than the new, like, Protoss and, and Zerg units. So, you know, right away, you know, Terrans are pretty good at using Warhounds. But I think there's there's counters of them out there to them. And I don't think we can say... I mean, they're good. They might be a little bit strong. They might need tweaking. But you can't cry OP yet because... Uh, you know, nobody has adjusted to it yet, so I don't know. We'll have to wait a couple of weeks and see. I'm pretty sure Blizzard. Um, I yeah. trust Blizzard to adjust it for us. Yeah, yeah. You've been crying all the time, like nonstop. It yeah. seems like Terran's imbalanced in both Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Storm, Juby. Wow, What's going wow, on here, man. Wow, what is I don't this? know, man. Terran's getting it's some another good... Terran brother in here. They're getting some good units, man. I mean, I'm not a biased guy, but it's just okay. it's what's on paper, man. It's what people are saying on the forums and stuff. We all know what they say is true. Um, yeah. But enough with Terran. Let's let's move on to Zerk. Um, and the first unit we're going to talk about is going to be the Viper. The Viper costs 100 minerals, 200 gas. It is three supply. A hive is required. The build time is 40. Damage uh, doesn't do any. DPS, not relevant. Range, not relevant either. Actually, isn't this the one that like pulls things pulls yeah. things back? So isn't yeah. there a range on that, I'm assuming? It's like mm, yeah. 9 or 10. I guess that's at max range if you get it like perfectly. Shields life, 120. Uh, uh, the movement speed is 2.95. Um, well, we'll start with with the Zergs. Uh, Vibe, have you have you used this? Have you used the Viper uh, much at all? Yeah, it's not bad, but I'm disappointed with how what it could have been. Like I, when I originally read about the unit, and I was thinking, oh, it has a cloud that puts any ranged unit underneath it down to one range, but the cloud itself costs a lot of energy, so you can't just you, and the uh, the unit itself is three supply. So you can't put clouds everywhere the entire time. You're gonna have to kind of you're gonna have a limited amount where you have to strategically place them. But when I played against the Protoss my first time and I realized the cloud didn't do anything to stalkers, I then read the skill and it said, "Oh, it only affects biological units." So that was kind of disappointing because now re realistically, the only unit that 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 ability is going to be used for, or the only ability that your matchup, yeah, whatever, you know what I mean. The ability will only be used in one matchup, in my opinion, now. And that's Zerg or Zerg. It's not really going to be used against Terrans or Protosses because the only unit it can actually affect out of Protoss and Terran is a Marine. And Marines are already so mobile and so fragile anyways that it would seem like a waste to go for something like that. Um, but in ZBZ, I can see it being really game-changing because if you have fun like if you could combine Fungal and that Cloud together, mm. not only do you lock units down to make them sit there underneath it, but they can't even attack anymore because their range is down to pretty much melee. So it's it's gonna be pretty huge in ZBZ, but uh, aside from the cloud ability, I think the grip is pretty nice in ZVP. I don't know necessarily how much I like it in ZVT because every Terran goes mech now, and uh, Thors shoot them every time they come in to pull anything, and they only have 120 hit points, so they die pretty fast. 
So I don't really like them right now in CBT. I, they, I think they'd be useful against like bio tank maybe, but against mech I don't really see it doing that well. But I like it against Protoss a lot. The, uh, the Scorpion pull, it's pretty nice. That's Caps. pretty much it. Or Juby, you have anything to add on to that? Um, Agree, disagree. Yeah, well, I played Zerg, and I think the consume thing is is pretty cool. Like, if you can, uh, so you know, can we go over the abilities really quick that it has in case people are confused? <laughs> okay, let's let's bring someone in to explain all their abilities. Is that maybe. what we're gonna do? Are you throwing that yeah. in now? Yeah, might as well. All right. Well, I think he we actually. Need a specialist. We're bringing in the expert. I think he actually. Yeah. You know, it's gonna screw up the overlays, man. Like, it's gonna screw up everyone's. Well, we're doing it. We're doing it. All right. We're going to add uh, a guest to the call. And his name from Team Liquid is Mr. He is, he, is, he is scholarly. He is beautiful. And he is handsome. He's also very manner. I'm waiting for him to answer the call. And I'm trying to, like, sync my intro up to when he actually actually answers it. But... You're doing a good job following it here. It seems like he's refusing. <laughs> he's like yeah. literally refusing to answer the call. Roll it. Um, Roll. He's, he's a Zerg player. He's very skillful. He um, knows a lot about the game, and he just finished <laughs> up a daily with uh, Mr. Mr. Sean Day Nine Plot. He is Sean Simon from Team Liquid Liquid, Liquid Chef. Liquid Chef. How are you doing, man? How are you doing, man? Pretty good. How about, yeah. you? How about you? I am doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. Thank you so much Thank for so asking. Much for Actually, you're the only person who asked me how I was doing. I asked Katz how he was doing. I asked Jerby how he was doing. I asked Vibe how he was doing. And I asked Chad Minigun Jones how he was doing. None of them asked me how I was doing. Sorry. Liquid Chef, this is why I love you. No problem. I do my best. Right. I do my best. I'm glad to hear that. But we're talking about the Viper. Um, okay. I don't know if you heard what Vibe had to say. Yeah. But I, I want you to kind of perhaps introduce <clears throat> your, uh, your your knowledge and, and handsomeness to, to the topic that is the Viper of the Zerg race. Well, Cats and Vibe already know it all, but for viewers, like, like uh, the coolest thing that, that the Viper can do too is if the Protoss tries to recall units, you can, like, yoink them out of the recall oh. with the Viper, so you pull them out of it. How instantaneous is that? How much time do you have to do that? It's like instant. It's really cool. Oh, nice. And you can, like, for cats, I want you to go one hive, one base, and I want you to viper a drone up and proxy hatch them. Please? Just just one game. I want to watch it. It yeah, would be okay. perfect. How are you going to kill yeah. someone with with only vipers? I don't get it. Well, you, you yank the drone up the cliff, and you proxy hatch them. Oh, Okay. It's going to be so a nine-minute road rush. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's brilliant, man. Good work. Brilliant. Cats, I want you to do that the next time you stream. Yeah. Um, overlays a bit mm -hmm. off. Yeah, overlays messed up. I know it is. Like, I, I could oh. completely redo it. Is, is Sean going to be here the rest of the way? Should I just permanently redo it? Yeah. Right, yeah. Let me... Okay. Do you want one of y'all talk about the Viper while I figure this out? No, you, Sean, you don't go anywhere. You can't get out that easily. Okay, yeah, I can uh, talk about the Viper. If you leave, Sean, it will screw everything. So I won't leave, buddy. <laughs> okay. Oh, I gotta go. Um, I think I think the Viper. I think it's good. Um, I want to see somebody go. Cause me, your mic, please. Okay, this is the strat. You you uh, go mushroom men, what are they called? By swarm host. Swarm host. <laughs> and you bring an overlord. You poop some creep. You br you make uh, two evolution chambers, and you just make like two. Uh, uh, what are they called? Like. Maybe. I don't know the names. Of <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Help me help you. Hatchery. What? No, no the larva. Talking about, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> wow, you guys are just hanging me out to dry. I don't know okay. what you're talking about, man. Dude, I well, you're talking about a <laughs> I don't know how I just forgot the name of that. Um, Look at the chat. Here. Maybe the chat knows what you're talking Infestors. about. Yeah, that's no. that's where I got it from. You guys are useless. Um, okay, so yeah, you just you poop some creep. You bring two evolution chambers, and you just bring like one viper, and you just keep yoinking Colossus. And then consuming the evolution chamber, you make another Colossus, and the 
just to like protect the the mushroom men, the swarm host. Oh man, all you gotta do <laughs> is you bring a, an overlord. Over, put an overlord with drop, put a queen in there, and then poop creep so the queen put tumors down. And yeah. You just consume the tumors. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that could work. But I think you wouldn't would get that much energy. Yeah. yeah. No man, you would. You get yeah, plenty. Feel- I killed the viper. Go ahead. No, after you. What happened? Oh, I uh, I think the viper has. Uh, I can't like automatically think of a way for it to be super useful, to be honest. But I think it has a lot of potential. Um, as a unit, I think I think it it needs a lot of exploring before we can judge it. Um, as I see it right now, you know, there's already you know, compositions that I consider to be better that I would rather spend my gas on, especially once I have Hive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could see it as a circumstantial unit or, or making strategies that perhaps revolve around it or in ZBC, like I've said, I think it will be really useful in, you know, when we're both Zergs are going for the Roach Hydra compositions in the late game. Mm-hmm. Hey, does it affect any Protoss unit at all? It doesn't, right? No, that's. No. I think that's kind of silly. Like the the Warhound spell only affects like Terran and Protoss, and the Viper spell doesn't affect Protoss at all. I don't know. V- Viper spell does oh. affect Protoss a little bit. Which which units does it like? I mean, deny? not the blinding one. Not the blinding. Oh one. yeah. Oh, that's what I meant. Okay. I okay, guess. Yeah. I think the, the uh, other spell is really good against Colossus, though. So. Yeah. The other thing that I've played around with Vipers, I suppose, is like. Uh, Doing things like the the scorpion move thing, and then another parasite in the unit that use scorpion move. Uh, oh really? Yeah, that's yeah smart. it's good. So yeah, you, you could grab a tag, uh, tank, and, and you know, like once the battle starts, and then they're parasited. Because usually when you neuroparasite like uh, mech units, they're you know you're usually neuroparasiting a range of every other mech unit, so they can take down the infester. But if you do that, then you can actually neuroparasite them and use the unit to actually fight, and the turn can't kill the infester. Um, and the other thing is, like, if you position, like, your Vipers around an army, like, say, mech, especially, like, units like Thors are stronger when they're clumped up, so you can just, like, if you have, like, four Vipers, you know, pull pull four Thors out of the fight, and they're pretty slow to get back. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I personally haven't, haven't seen him used enough to really be able to contribute a whole bunch to this conversation, but um, general consensus... Any changes need to be uh, made to the Viper to either, uh, you know, make it better or, or, or soften it up a little bit or change some spells around? I think it might be too early to tell. Too early to tell. Uh, I'm leaning towards too strong. Too strong. Oh, wow. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. It needs to be buffed some, if anything. <laughs> Minigun, yeah, why? I think, so too. I think, if anything, it needs to be buffed. Because I don't think you, you would ever make it PvZ. Over an infester or broodlord tech, you know, you know why it's amazing in that because whenever you have your original broodlord army, and say your broodlord army dies and you have a bunch of money, you can actually just remake pure hydra and like five uh, fibers, and it's yeah. it's so strong. Like, tell me a composition that'll beat it, and I'll I'll shoot that composition down. I'm sure, unless it is storm, I guess. Storm. Hey, storm. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, okay, I can have my own counter, whatever. But still, like, they're super fast Hydras, and, like, you can pull the Templar to you, maybe. I don't now, know. Is the, is the mobility of that type of composition something to to be concerned about? As or I know the Hydras got a little bit of a buff. Um, their speed got buffed, but they're still not, like, super fast. Their move speed's now, like, 2.7 or something with that upgrade. It's still slower than a Roach that has speed. It's more than a Roach? It's slower than a Roach that has speed. Yeah, thought so. Alright. Anything else on the Viper before we move on? Going once. Sheth, Sheth loves his Vipers. Sheth loves them. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I, I mean, how many, how, many vipers, how many Vipers are you going to make? Like, for, six. you know, you say, like, six Vipers. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's nice. 1,200 gas. Yeah. No, is it? It's like five yes, Broodlords. It's, yeah, it yeah. it's 100, cool. 200. It's Pretty less than now. five Broodlords. Okay. All right. Speaking of broodlords, 
Next up, we got the Swarm Host, which I think has a lot of uh, you know similarities to that to that brute lord. It costs. Wait, wait, wait! Do you say, wait? Did you say it Remax on, on like you Remax on yeah. Hydra Viper? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like where the hell do you get the gas for that? Like, I don't know, but like if you're if you split map Metropolis, and you're pushing with like brute lord and Fester, and you're like, and it all dies because of neural or whatever, but you take out most of their army. And then you just remax Hydra and and uh, Vipers really quick because it's speedy. But, but for some reason they can't use Storm if it's like a split <laughs> map. You, know, you, you, like, can, you can pull you can pull the Templar. That's the only thing. You like, pull like, the Templar. Talking about, you're, you're talking about a case scenario where like you have like five thousand gas banked up and the, the map is split, but the Protoss won't have Storm. Okay, well imagine they go a bunch of carriers and they just don't have that much Storm ready for it. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I like gambling, but, like, holy... I don't know. Well, yeah, there's okay. speed now. Like, you can split them like Brudor. It's much easier oh, now oh, to dodge oh. Storm. Just like Marines. Nice. No big deal. Yeah. Let's split it. Let's split the Hydras. Dodge them Storms. I believe in you, Chef. I believe in your... I love like it, man. I like this innovative discussion. It's good, Chef. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Speaking of innovative discussion, I had a really good transition on the last one, but Kat's kind of had a thought and it's fine it's perfectly fine but we got the swarm host uh 200 100 supply three requirements infestation pit build time 40. um of course it, it, it shoots out those locusts which is really hard to say as a caster uh build time 25 between bursts damage 16 dps 0.8 range 3 shields life 120 speed 2.95 now it, it, for people who have been watching streams and whatnot this is this is the thing that burrows underground and shoots out little little things that shoot pellets at you know whatever they're attacking um you know obviously you need detection to be able to see it underground um you know it's it, it shoots out the little it, it, you can rally them and they attack on their own um let's get thoughts on the thing i mean me personally um I think they're definitely hard to deal with it, uh, deal with. But honestly, I think there are openings, there are vulnerabilities to them that you could definitely take advantage of. Um, that I'm interested on in hearing your thoughts on. So, we're gonna have the newcomer uh, chime in first. Chef, what do you think about the swarm host? How have you used it in their games, and how good do you think this unit is? Okay, uh, in ZVZ, I think it has a lot of potential. You can defend some roach timings with it. Okay. And, I mean, you just put, make that and then roaches. You basically replace Infester with these, and you just slowly build. I mean, it may not be quite as good as Infester. I'm not really sure yet, but it's at least something new. And interestingly enough, if you get, like, a critical amount of those, you can actually stalemate Broodlords if you do it right. Um, and that's something I haven't really messed around with too much, but if you have, like, maybe seven Broodlords, and you have something like 15 Swarm Hosts, you can kind of stalemate it. It's really weird. That's that's my basic thoughts on it. I, I guess. haven't seen Broodlords much, uh, having watched streams and stuff. It, it it seems like that's something people are. Well, I don't know. Do you, uh, how how often have you seen them, Chef, in your games? Uh, just a few times, maybe one or once or twice. Okay. Um, anyone have anything to to reply to to Chef's um, well suggestions? I don't know. About, I don't know about ZBZ. Um, every. Only one time, Cats went Swarm Host against me, and he owned me. But wow. I was trying to go Marine Tank. Um, every time I've been going back, and Zerg has attempted to go Swarm Host, it has not gone well for them at all. But Swarm Host seem to be doing really good against Protoss, so I don't know. They don't seem very good against Terran. That's, that's all I know. But everyone's trying them out. It's not working. I mean, I think they're one of the most... Uh, the more exciting units that came with Heart of the Storm. Like, they're the one that everyone's like, they're exclusively playing Zerg to make this unit. Uh, you know, in the first game I played, I, I you know, I made I made a lot of them. It was a ZVZ, and I won the game. It was a lot of fun. Um, now, obviously, some issues are, okay, you know, obviously they have to be out of ground, um, you know, to get where they have to go, so there's some vulnerability there, considering they're completely exposed if they're not underground. Um, and then, of course, you know, the element of actually walking, you know, this is included walking across the map. Um, I've thought about, like, w w would dropping these things near Mineral Lines, would that be any good? Like, uh, dropping it into, into a main base of an opponent? I think um, that's the first idea I've had, so I'll let him take them. Take them. Five, do you uh, do that? I don't know. After I've experimented with them quite a bit, 
Uh, I think that the only place the Swarm most has is when... Uh, in ZBZ, <coughs> it's a little different. I feel like Swarm most actually, you can push like the tempo of the game back and forth with Swarm most if, as long as you pick your positioning uh, pretty well. But in like against Terran, and, uh, like against Terran, they're fucking terrible right now. I think just because every Terran goes mech right now, and they're really bad against mech. But against Protoss, is I think that I have a really good style where I uh, I like pressure, we, like a, like it's like a, a roach style, kind of like Wings of Liberty, and I'll put the Protoss either back on two bases or contain him on three, and then I'll just contain him even further with. Uh, a good creep spread, and I'll just like start building static defense around his base, and I'll just siege him with uh, swarm hosts. But I don't think necessarily dropping them is a good idea, just because the effectiveness of them is, in my opinion, better when you get more. Like it's like sure. if you drop, if you were to drop like two swarm hosts in his base, he could literally just run an observer over there and kill him and ha take like almost no losses. Whereas if you wanted to drop someone, you might as well drop like infestors, and that's what Katz and I were talking about before. Like he was actually saying. Uh, infestors would be better, and I experimented a li experimented a little bit with it, and I, it's true. Like it, the swarmos don't really do much on their own, and if you wanted to just drop, you might as well use infestors because they're they do a lot of uh, burst in terms of like you just throw a bunch of Terrans out, you just kill everything, or you can also like fungal drop mineral lines and stuff like that. So, could I ask I think, what you think about microing them? Because you could put maybe ten swarm hosts in drop ships, drop them, burrow. And then just unburrow once they've spit them out and run away. Ooh. Like just uh, to do mineral damage, maybe. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I think uh, I it, think that's a risky move, man. Yeah, yeah. that's that's gonna I mean, be that's like thirty supply. supply. Yeah, that's thirty supply in overlords that's flying around, and then that's eight overlords or ten overlords. I don't know what you said, and uh, that's it's more obvious for your opponent to notice a big uh, like a huge fleet coming at your base, <laughs> unless it's like yeah. unless they have zero scouting. But, yeah, uh, I don't think it's good either. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about it. I'm coming up with ideas. No, that's great. Thank you. Keep doing that. Uh, <laughs> Minigun needs to do that more. Minigun, give us something creative. Come up no, with dumber I ideas than me. I dare you. <laughs> it's like I can't. Sorry. If you're if you're like sitting on, on swarm hosts and you just like if you're sitting on swarm hosts and you just like drop a bunch of them, at, like you know, like you're you're pr you're pretty naked behind that. I think it's yeah. they're they're not cheap units. Um, I think I think I think they're the best unit or better than the Viper I should say. Um, I think I think it has a ton of potential. I think it will change the meta game of almost every matchup eventually, or at least uh, give the Zerg options. I'm actually really 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 happy with uh, with the Swarm Host. I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought it was gonna be a crap unit when they first introduced it, and when I first used it in the you know Heart of the Swarm uh, custom map. But then they buffed it, and I think it's really good right now. Um, I think like they only like they, they cost 100 gas and 200 minerals, so I think Swarm Host and Fester is, is a really good combination of units to go for. Um, I think there are going to be amazing units for harassing. Like say you burrow like three or four Swarm Hosts in a corner of the map because they have amazing range. Like the you know the little crate. How long did they last? Is it 15 seconds? It's 25 at the upgrade. Oh, okay. And then 25, 25 seconds yeah. respawn rate. Yeah, so like you can siege bases and you can hide the warm the the warm host the swarm hosts like somewhere on the map. So it, it you don't even have to put them at risk. You know, you don't have to put them like close to the base. You can just put them somewhere else and then siege the base with like say three swarm hosts. And then it's on your opponent to like waste actions and, and seeing like where like following the where where those critters are coming from and stuff like that. Um I think also with fungal growth, they're amazing. If you can just like fungal the units and prevent them from getting close to the swarm hosts, yes. um, I think they should be seen as sort of like a an energy unit because the longer it stays in the game, the more it pays for itself. So, you know, I I I don't think it should be seen as a ah. Uh, I'd rather have you know a couple like I don't know three or four roaches instead of the two critters that it spits. You should see it as you know as a time investment, and that's why I think like the protecting them is, is so important, and uh, fungal growth works great with them. I'm really happy with that unit. Have you tried corruptor uh, swarm host with like uh, overseer, and you just snipe yes, observers, observers yeah. and you pick off colossus? 
No, I didn't try that actually, but I played a game as, against TT1 that was really good, and then he eventually, like, um, you know, his Colossi were doing a, a bunch of damage. I think if I had gotten Corruptors that game, like, Swarm Hosts were just so strong, and they require minimal effort. I think they're uh, so positional, you know, I think, I, I don't know. They open so much strategy up. It's it's a really exciting unit. I don't know. Yeah. What about against uh, like like Blink Stalkers and uh, like Mothership Core recalling or War Prism Harass and stuff? They just seem really really immobile and bad against. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They seem pretty bad against like Marine only styles and stuff like that. <clears throat> like pretty mobile stuff. Um, they're really positional, like I was saying. So I think as we learn to control them. And uh, you know, learn where to put them. I think those problems uh, will not go away, but they will be easier to deal with. And I think it has a lot of potential. Like I said, it's, we're far from figuring it out. All right. So general consensus, pretty good unit. Doesn't no changes needed. They need anyone disagreeing? Anyone think it needs to be changed a little bit? I, I don't know. I think it's a little overkill against Protoss because like. If you if you combine the Swarmhost with Fungal Growth, so, so Swarmhost and Infester, yes. it does ridiculous amounts of damage when the Protoss can't actually run away from it, and you like lock them down while this... Like if the Protoss engages you and you Fungal him, he, know, he now you're doing damage with Fungal, but he can't retreat either, and then this... The damage they do is so ridiculous, because yeah. it's each Swarmhost spawns two little minions, and each one of those has the same attack speed as pretty much a Hydralisk, and the same damage as a Roach. So that's like, uh, I don't even. It's like uh, about 16, forty yeah. DPS yeah. or something. Yeah, they can take out source. a PF like so fast. Yeah, yeah. I I played a game against uh, Faith earlier today, and he did a timing attack that I wasn't ready for, and I almost lost. And then I just made like ten swarmos and a few investors, and he had a Colossus Century Stalker army, and he tried to go up my ramp and fight me, and then his army no was probably like it was today. It was earlier today. Yeah. But his army, like, it was about a hundred supply army, and it died in about... It was one spawn of ten swarm hosts, like, one spawn rotation of ten swarm hosts, and chain fungals killed that army in, like, ten seconds, or, like, eight, nine seconds. It was kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, think at, ma at maximum potential, it might be too strong as well. Like, if you can get those into position, like, a good position, like, it's very hard for anyone going against it to deal with. Um, I think one vulnerability, I don't know if y'all would agree, like... There, there, obviously, there's a countdown from when you, you shoot one, uh, you know, set of uh, locusts <coughs> to when, you know, you can shoot more. Um, I, I'm wondering when players are going to start, like, identifying, okay, my, my opponent just shot him, and they're going down one path, and then that's when you try to engage him. Like, yeah. is it, have y'all tried to that's, do that? That's why yeah. I've actually started like, stagger spawning my, my spawn house. I think it's better. Because, like, so you, you wait have, like, for them window. to go, and then there's there's a window there where, the, where, the, where they're not defended, so you can go in and try to kill them. Yeah, that's why you need fungal as well. Yeah, right. there's definitely a lot of stuff to be done with them. Yeah, yeah. just a cool unit. It just helps encourage that. That's a really cool unit, which, which is pretty I think, awesome. yeah. If also, anything, it's uh, too strong. Yeah. I think it needs a buff. Oh. What about... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just wanted Cat's response. That's all. Sorry. <laughs> it's funny how you two Zergs disagree on uh, the Stormhost and Viper. One says the Viper's too strong, needs nerf. The other one says it's too weak, and the other one says... Stormhost needs a buff, and yeah, it's good. That means that there's a lot left to explore. Nobody knows exactly what's overpowered or underpowered. And it, it could all change in like a week, right? I mean, who knows when they're going to Yeah, yeah, them. yeah. yeah. Um, so, that being said, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next unit, if everyone's okay with the Swarmhost discussion. Wait, wait, wait. Well, are we, know are we done with Zerg? No. Uh, wait, are we? Yes. Hold on. Yeah, we yes. only got two. Wait, 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 wait. What, what, is, what about the ultra, Ultralisk, the Burrow? Oh, I didn't get a graphic for that. We can talk about it, though. Okay. I yeah, just... Not really a new unit. Have y'all seen it? Have you seen it? <laughs> I saw a vibe. It just looks awesome. Good job, Lizzie. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. It looks that's really, really cool. cool. Vibe, you when did you, when pop did you up use in it? There and... It's an upgrade, it's, though, right? Uh, it's really good as long as the Terran's not maxed out on the mech army that has a lot of tanks. Because <laughs> yeah. the reason well, why ultras, I say that is ultras are never going to be good in that situation. Well, like the reason why I say that they is are. because uh, the the burrow charge. The way I thought it worked before, from the video I saw a long time ago, was as soon as the ultra, as soon as you have the upgrade, as soon as the ultra becomes within the activation range of the charge, it it just instantly goes underground and it like speeds towards the unit, pops up, and then bounces everything around. 
But the way it works right now in the beta is you have to cast the uh, the Burrow Charge uh, controller command just like you would cast Fungal Growth for an investor. Oh. So it's like a it's like a green circle on the ground and you just do it and then the closest ultralisk will do it. And the ultra that gets the command to do it, it'll, it'll, it has about like three range or four range where it'll go underground and then burrow towards its target and then up burrow. But the speed it goes underground is ridiculously slow. It's about as fast as like a burrowed infester would move towards a unit. What? Or something. How yeah, it's really charge? slow. How is that a charge? That's yeah, it's it's like burrowed like sneak in and then up burrow. Watch it. That's. And then uh, not only that, but you can't actually, uh, pa like it. The pathing's kind of weird. So, uh, I tried doing it against mech, and I didn't have a problem against the small mech army because it was like a few Thors, a few Warhounds, whatever. And I literally just crushed the army, so I thought it was really strong, and I was actually pretty happy with it. But then later on in that game, I played against the same... It was like a bigger version of that mech army, which now had like 12 tanks or something, and all the tanks were bunched up. And ideally, I thought, okay, that's going to be easy, because I'll just charge right in the middle of all those tanks, and they all die. But the way the AI works is a tank kind of acts like a building, and you can't charge under a tank that's sieged, so it doesn't work. Is that a glitch, then, uh, do you think? I have no idea. I hope it is because if it isn't, that means ultras are terrible against mech. Wait, forever. can you can you burrow? Can you do it under tanks that aren't sieged? Yeah, you can. But, but as soon as they siege, they they count as like mounted buildings, I guess. Because because if you try to charge under them, it'll give you like error sounds and it won't work. And then uh, you have to charge on like the outsides of the tanks on the on the outer edges of the circle. And when I did that, uh, the Terran was constantly scanning me while I was going. So all my ultras were going like one and mile it's going an hour. Slow, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're going like one mile an hour uh, underground. And only, I did it with about, <clears throat> like, uh, 11 or 12 Ultralisk, and only, I think, two made it out alive to actually wow. pop up and then die right after. <laughs> so it was pretty bad. <laughs> it's a little anticlimactic. Vibe's like, all right, I got my 11 Ultras, I got my so much, I'm ready, baby, let's hit the charge button, let's go! <laughs> it's like crawling, and then they all die. I'm sorry, Vibe. It's okay. Chun, Chun, you have too many amazing ideas with the Viper. Yeah, I want to take a Viper and... Pull an Ultralisk onto tanks with the Viper. Right. Turn, I'll just have a Thor and shoot the Viper down in two seconds. Uh, Vibe, okay, get out of here with your logic. Chef, give me something with the Swarm Host. Give me something creative. No, I got nothing. What? That was it. That was it. It's only, it's only the Viper. Only the Viper. Viper. Not the, the Swarm yeah. Host, man. What if you proxy really... a hatch and build a, one of them in your opponent's Okay, team? I have an idea. You okay. can I... you can burrow okay. a Swarm Host, yeah. and then you Viper and you lift it up into their base. <laughs> Yeah. I like hey. It. Okay, Sean. I got an idea. Does it stay hey, you do. You do. Uh, you do a swarm host drop in their base, and then when your opponents when your opponents coming to kill them, use the viper yeah. and pull them pull them out. Yeah, Evacuate. that works out cool too. In instant evacuation. No oh, man. Use a viper and pull investors in an enemy's mineral line, and then fungal it, and then viper back out of the base. Oh again. yeah, that's smart. It's it's gonna be much more fancy than dropping them. Yeah. <laughs> Sheth said uh, to me today. You can you can uh, like pull a bailing onto your opponent's marines, which would never work because the viper would never get on top of the marines. But it it was it was cool. Oh man, the cloud! Put the cloud on the marines. Oh, and then fly okay. Over them. Yeah. Okay. And then pull them. The yeah. Infinite. Don't move. Yeah. All right, I got something. All right, so ZVP, attack your your Protoss opponent's third. Have a viper and a, and, a, and, a, and an infester. Viper the mothership core. Neural parasite. The mothership core, and then recall your Zerg army at the third back, and then you're safe. <laughs> I'm yes! not sure what you just said. Champion, that was so good. <laughs> just think about it for a second. Okay. This is brilliant. That was Katz's idea. Katz what? Came up with it already. After, after this on, show, man. Minigun liked it. Everyone's gonna make That's Vipers true. on the ladder. They're just gonna like rush to Vipers and try and do the fanciest shit with them, and it's gonna be hilarious. It's gonna be awesome. You imagine yeah, if your opponent awesome. had a Viper and you both Vipered each other? Would you like switch? Dude, I don't solo? know. Oh. I'm gonna start a series. <laughs> Top ten Viper plays. Send me your replays. Top ten Viper plays, and I'll make a series out of it. I'll make it awesome, and right. you'll be famous. So I, I already that, know what. I send already that know what to number me. one would be. Vibe, you number can submit one. one too. Number one would be three Vipers all in a line, and you just you're against a Protoss. Oh. And you pull a probe out of his base three different times, and then you neural no it at the last one, and you make a nexus. nexus out of his base in your base, or something that'd like be, that. Yeah, that'd be cool. And, and then you can make your own Protoss units, and you don't have to neural them anymore. That'd be sweet. You're muted. <laughs> muted cats. I'm guessing if you uh, 
if you have a unit knurled and then it gets vipered out, it's like the tongue doesn't stretch, right? It gets out of the knurl? Uh, yeah, if you knurled it and then pulled it, it wouldn't work. I wouldn't okay. imagine. Because that'd be cool. It's like a super long tentacle. Yeah. It's an anaconda. We gotta mix the nitus. We gotta mix the nitus into this somehow. Um, All right. Nothing new with it. Okay, let's. No, well, as far as using uh, a viper. Just and, uh, uh, if you make a nitus worm and it's not actually done yet, you can pull it around with a viper. With the really? scorpion pull. No. <laughs> no liar. All right. Anything else? Anything else? Zerg, we're missing. Is there anything else? I think it's good. No. I mean, we we talked about hydra speed. Yeah. I'm waiting for the chat to maybe come up with something they want us to talk about. Juby, I know I'm waiting for. Bit. I'm waiting for the chad. The Chad. Huh? Yeah. Chad, it's what do you think of Zerg, man? I, I haven't played it much, man. Chad. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. I forgive you, man. Okay. I challenge well, you to PBZ, though. Me, P-U-Z. Ready? All right, let's do it. All right. We're going to have that. We're going to make that happen. All right, next up, we got Protoss. We got Protoss. We got Protoss. I'm, like, all excited, but, like, a lot of people aren't that excited that about excited Protoss. Protoss. Uh-oh, I hear myself. Oh, I hear got, myself. Got. Test. Test. Speaking of test, the Tempest. Cost, minerals, gas, 300, 300. Sl uh, supply, 6. Requirements, Stargate. Build time, 75. Damage, 30. DPS, 3.3. Range, 10. Shields, life, 150, 300. Uh, mole speed, 1.88. Oh my god, the Tempest. Okay. This thing is comes out of Stargate. You need a fleet beacon. Cost 300, 300. It's pretty expensive, but it's pretty fun to use. Does this change PvP? Minigun? I'm going to go to you first. I'm going to say no. What? No. Dude, you realize PvP is now is all Colossus. Yeah, it's gonna stay that way. Oh my gosh, minigun! Does anyone disagree with me? I'm minigun? sorry. I'm sorry. It's you don't apologize. You're you're entitled to your opinion. It's completely fine. But it's okay. the Tempest, man. It has 50 range. It doesn't do that much damage. I don't think. At least as it, far does as I, it, it does 30. Like it does like 30 damage. I mean, yeah. the, the, the the DPS isn't is incredible. And, yeah, it's got like a 3.5 second attack speed. It doesn't seem game changing. It's six to me. Too. Does it? I mean, um, Chad, have you have you used this thing? I mean, well, I'll just I'll, we'll just go to Chad. Chad, have you used this okay. thing, or have you been straying away from it? I've been using it, PVZ, against Birdlords. It seems pretty sick for uh, forcing them to engage. But now they can't just sit behind the spines until they have like twenty Birdlords. <laughs> so it's kind of nice. It's good. Are they more useful it. than carriers? I would say so. so. The only thing that sucks though is all Zerg has to do is make an overseer, kill your observer, and then as soon as you get a little closer because you won't be able to see anything. Well, you can use the and oracle and get vision, right? The yeah, 120nd yeah. thing? But isn't that like attached yeah. to a building? Just like run the spine crawler away? Or mm. wherever you're fighting with? Is that really? Uh, I yeah. think it attaches to a building. It does. Oh, so if I you're, if, that. If you're actually the pushing building? with Gridlords? Or you could kill it. Or I don't know if killing it, I think the vision still stays there. Oh, wait, what about, you can have but an I, observer. What do you mean? But I, well, you can have you an overseer and you can just, can just kill it. Kill it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Hmm. I noticed that once the vision's gone, it's easy to pull the, uh, the whatever they're called, the new carriers, uh, Tempests, Tempest. with uh, the Viper, and then you just, they die instantly once you pull them. Oh, yeah. minigun, actually, that, that actually reminds uh, me, Minigun, you played Kiwi Kaki, and he managed to retain vision for a very long time. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. I, I what happened with that? What was that about? He, he didn't have an observer, so I felt like he just did it in the airspace, but I'm not sure. Well, we need um, to find that out, man. I'm not 100% positive, but I think it attaches to a building. No, it absolutely does. You you, okay. you select a building with the oracle, yeah. and it, 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 it keeps the vision there for a very long time. Um, and the oracle is obviously very fat. Well, we're gonna get to or oracle later. Um, but cats, have you encountered the tempest, and, and do you, have you found it annoying, or have you found it to be very easy to deal with? As a no, I, re I really haven't. I think it's another unit that has a lot of potential, and it could be really circumstantial. But I don't think it will break anything. I don't know. All right, Juby. Um, TVP. Have you seen the tempest being used? Yeah, it's it's annoying. Uh, if they catch you off guard, can definitely uh, you know change the game around. If the Terran is just massing up warhounds, then pretty much 
the only way to beat that is to go air, so then the turn's going to be ready for it. Um, does anybody know if PDD shoots shoots the Oracle Ooh. shot? I heard Wait, you mean the Tempest shot? Should. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. I doubt it does. I don't know. But it's a projectile, so... I don't know. Maybe that'll actually get Terrans to make Ravens. Yeah, I mean, if, if PDD stopped it, that would pretty much nullify it, because when yeah. PDD would, would stop the Oracle for, like, until it... The, ra the Tempest. Drewby, stop saying Oracle. <sighs> oh, oh my god. I forgive you. I don't know the name. I'm bad with names. Tempest, the big thing know. in the air that shoots yeah. glowing balls. Yeah. The new carrier. Yeah. Um, well, the carrier's still there, isn't it? Yeah, no, I it's mean... Gone. It's not? They got replaced by the Tempest. I saw it in the you know hockeys. But I guess I, it's... I don't know. I, there's there. so much stuff that changed. I, I don't know. I didn't know. Yeah. Like, for, for what they said before. Okay. I think... Uh, I don't think it's that great against Terran. Vikings can just roll out and kill it, and Thors are pretty good against them. If the Perdos get really, really good at positioning them and having... Uh, nobody's used the, the Oracle reveal and then harass with them yet against me. I've been able to just, like, kill the Observer and then clean up the Oracles. It doesn't seem like it should be harassment type <laughs> units. Tempest. Oh my god. <laughs> Jimmy, stop yeah, it. One day, one day I'll learn. Like, you're talking about harassment. Isn't the Tempest supposed to be like this this, this mammoth beast that comes out of the Stargate? 300, 300? That's expensive, no, no, man. No. They're not good in, in head-on fights against Terran. They're only meant for harassing or like breaking the Terran or forcing them to engage just like sure. uh, against Zerg, forcing the, the Brillers to fight. So, that's, that's kind of their only use. If the Terran's turtling really hard, then the Tempest can force them to attack. I got it right there. I'm proud of myself. Good job, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, like I, I saw Faith play against Major earlier, and Faith just kind of masked up Tempest and sat there, and then Major just rolled out with a bunch of Thors and Vikings, and it was like they just got instantly crushed. So I think if you're gon going to make them, they're situational, and you have to be constantly using them and annoying the turn. Sheth, uh, yeah. do you have any uh, interesting uh, encounters with the Tempest unit in your Heart of the Swarm play thus far? Just, I don't think they're very good against Corruptors. Corruptors mm -hmm. are really, really good against them, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So what would, a ma would any of you be afraid of a maxed Tempest army out of your opponent? Yeah. Maybe if there was a wall of like 50 cannons that they were hiding behind. That would be a good start, actually. Hey, yeah, storm. storm. Yeah, hey, Templars. Just but do I, a just do a wall of cannon push across the map, <laughs> and, and like you know, twenty tempest hiding behind them. Yeah, I feel it's pretty hard to get a max tempest army. So, I've done it one of my latter games. Just saying, it was fun. Yeah, minigun. You played a game against Kiwikaki as Terran. He was using tempest against you, and you see invisibly frustrated. That, Can you explain? That, that that was quite annoying. Well, he was uh. You, Attacking the mineral lines with it. He was using the oracle for vision, I guess, and just did it on a building next to the mineral line. And yeah, not really anything you can do. Well, then again, he had like 15, so maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so general consensus is this a unit that needs to be uh, messed with at all, either to make it better or to, to nerf it a little bit? Too early to tell, in my opinion. Could yeah. buff it, I think. Yeah, it's really expensive in six supply. It, I think it could be buffed. I wouldn't have a problem with that. It's yeah, it's three hundred, three hundred, and it it doesn't seem all that impressive, at least to me, at least. But again, a lot of things can change. Uh, there have been scenarios we probably haven't thought of uh, where it can be utilized and probably used pretty darn well. But moving on. The next Protoss unit is going to be the Oracle. This is the thing that flies around and melts away your mineral line, or at least uh, prevents your workers from mining your minerals. You can still, you can, you can hit away at the the things, whatever they're called, but it, it takes a bit, and you have to have units in position. Cost is 150, 200. Comes out of the Stargate. It's three supply. Build time 60. The other things it has is this. It has a reveal spell, which I, I'm not entirely sure what's called off the top of my head. Um, where you can 
select the spell at a, at a building and it gives you vision of that entire building. We've talked about that a little bit as far as helping give the Tempest some vision advantage. Um, the last spell is escaping me at the moment. Um, is it a damage dealer? No, no, it doesn't do damage. What is it? You're talking about the Oracle? Yeah, the third one. I can't think of it. Uh, Minigun. Minigun, help me! All right. Any gun? I'm drawing a blank. You can't put me on the spot. I'm I, I doing might have it, man. I'm putting you on the spot. spot. It's too late. I've already Truby, forgotten. Truby, look at the chat, man. You gotta help us, Truby. Okay, chat. Okay, th there's the vision one. Detection. There's... Oh, I don't know if that's true though. No, you're right. Yeah. No, you're right. It is detection. I haven't yes. actually used it yet. I haven't used it. Good Has job. It? Has anyone used right. that? Right, Mark. Has anyone used that? I haven't. No, I, haven't I, I, I don't also. play Protoss. No, I yeah, mean, yeah. gun? <laughs> no. I mean, okay, as, as, as far as that goes, <laughs> Chad, you're so helpful today. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, so I'm much. sorry. These videos are awful. I'm trying. It's I'm okay. trying. And you A for yeah. effort. Um, when, when Chad plays Heart of the Swarm, he just plays Wing, Wings of Liberty. I mean, it, <laughs> Sounds yeah. about right. I mean, no. Apparently. As far as the detection thing is concerned, um, in PVT, I feel like there could be an element where, okay, you don't necessarily need an observer because you have that thing. So if you're going Stargate tech, you don't necessarily have to worry about getting the robo as fast, the robo tech. I don't know. Maybe there's something there. Um, but the Oracle in general, let's let's just talk. Let's talk about that. I mean, I'm sure you guys have experienced the the little orb, uh, you know, zip over to your mineral line and, and prevent you from mining. Uh, yeah. Laughing maniacally as it as it goes on its merry way. Um, have y'all been putting down static defenses to deal with these things, or is it just not an issue? Whatever, I'll just kill it with my marines that are available, or my my zerglings, or whatever. I don't make marines. What are you talking about? My bad. War warhounds. Just one widow mine. That's it. Hmm. Zerglings don't shoot air. No, I meant uh, when they put the the things on your mineral <laughs> lines. Uh, like to get rid of those is what I meant. I think honestly, it's uh, all you'd have to do is you just make some units, uh, like you're you're making units anyways, obviously to prevent timings that they would possibly die from. But instead of actually leaving them maybe between like your third and your natural or something, you just put them at every single mineral line and you just let them beat off the. Uh, <laughs> That sounded really bad, but <laughs> you just let them kill <laughs> the minerals that are tombed over. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they like. The, the Protoss gets behind from the very beginning because they invest in the oracles that don't really do anything. That's at least what I've seen. If they go for it right away. Yeah, I agree. So is this something, uh, you know, is it worth making? Is it, is it uh, you know, can players make it cost efficient? Uh, Maybe they... PVC. The other ones I don't think so. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with that. Um, PVP like I haven't three... been able to experiment with enough. It takes like three queen shots and you're already hitting its health. It's yes. really, really weak. It's very weak. I th I th it's super fast though. I, th I think it's a unit that has potential and it's, it's too early to say it's weak or strong. If, it, if anything, I'd be leaning towards weak. But I, I think it has so many spells and so many uses on like the... You know, ca can the Mothership Core still energize that thing? Yeah, yes, yeah. actually, I so you, Minigun so knows about... Uh, go ahead. Yes, so you can like neutralize... Can so you could like neutralize like two mineral lines really fast. Yeah. Um, if you rushed for that, like when the Cirque doesn't have like yes. say many units Let out, stuff like off. that, uh, it could be good off. for lands, one bases. I don't know. This is actually you imagine like a Protoss build where you just go one base and rush to that super quick. Hold on, I'll, cool. I'll tell you the build. It's yeah, you could go like yeah, rush to that super quick, then follow it up with four gates, energize right. that shit. So PVZ, Minigun yeah. knows about Who this. Knows? P PVZ, you hmm? do a Forge Fast Expand, you follow it up with a Stargate. Uh, you know, if you time it correctly. Your mothership core, you know, obviously you build that after your core is done. Your mothership core should finish, or it'll finish. It should have enough energy to cast Energize right when your first Oracle comes out of your Stargate. And then you can power it up right when it comes out, and then all of a sudden it has 200 energy, and you can uh, you can neutralize two Zerg mineral lines. I came up with that build. Is it good? Do you guys I like think, it? I think I think so it's sick. I think yes. Faith or T T one did that. No! Because I told them. I yeah. have it in the Skype yeah. log. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's even... Did it first. Sit. I Chad, say it again. No, no, no. Everyone, no. everyone, can we just please? Chad, go I'm ahead. I'm on your side. Yes. I said Axel Toft did it first. Yes. Oh, okay. We have confirmation there. All right. Can I have my Alex. name on that thing? Alex. No, I'm not saying it's like... Out of you. It's the Alex Axel build. 
Okay. You know, because you know what we should do actually. Do you think because, that's good, like, Chef? By the way, just wanna. Hmm? Do you think that's Say good, again? Chef? The, uh, I don't the build know. I proposed? Maybe. Okay. Could be. I'll do it against you. And I'll well, okay. It. What we all need to do though is like start editing editing Wikipedia and just claiming uh, Harpy's <laughs> Farm builds their own. <laughs> no, but this one's actually <laughs> mine. Come on, man. Oh my god. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna say the chat you did that in in uh, the Heart of Storm like uh, custom map. Yeah. Like TT1 played a lot with with yeah, those. Yeah, he did. With the, <laughs> um, wait, with, wait, the wait. with the destructible rocks, though, I think like it it could be like even better because you wouldn't have to make any units. Just kill the rocks with a cannon while doing that. Good stuff. What's the deal with the rocks? Like I was playing against a Zerg and and I got all Zerg Ling Roach all in and I was completely unprepared and someone in my chat was like, "Hey, just kill the rocks. It makes them stronger or something." Is there what's what's up with that? Do y'all know okay, what I'm talking about? Okay, so there's about? rocks. There's like two spots on a ramp. There's rocks here. I think they have like 500 health. Yeah. If you kill them, they like flip over and fall and then nothing can pass until the second rocks they like fall and turn into a 2000 HP mound stronger and nothing can pass yeah so you have to kill them and they actually do like 500 damage when they fall too it's weird so you can like wait till it's 5 HP and then when your opponent attacks finish it off or something like that and try to smash yeah. it yeah actually I don't think anybody had thought of that yet that's it's genius that's you're genius when your opponent uh, just hit it once well they yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they try and run in there <laughs> okay yeah, well, leave enough. it with like 100 Which HP everything. Yeah, sick. Right. Yeah, no, just no, just leave it with five HP just in case. I mean, if you know, best worst case scenario, they break it anyways. Best case scenario, you could kill a bunch of shit. Yeah, yeah, you split their army and everything. Yeah. Um, but wait, back to the oracle. Oracle, yes. In uh, in TVP late game, in Wings of Liberty, you could get like like twenty Vikings and twenty ghosts, mm -hmm. and you could never die because the Vikings would just kill the uh, observers. observers. Yep. And yeah, so I think the Oracle is a good solution to that. It's so weak, though. What do you mean? It's a good well, point. you can you can do the the scan thing, the reveal. The how, how, you have to be you have to be in in range to do that. Really? Does it not have good range? I mean, it's like isn't it like six or something like that? I don't the know. Range how, isn't incredible. How much area does it reveal? Let me see. Okay, I don't know. I haven't actually used it, but I'm under the impression that you have to be, uh, you know, relatively close to wherever area you're scanning. It's not like an orbital command scan. Uh, the oracle has to be there. Like when you cast oh. the, when you cast the the spell oh, to neutralize so the minerals, like, it's, it's like the same observer, kind of thing. Oh, that's stupid. Yeah. So. Okay, never mind. I take it back. Oracle. It's not an actual scan. Yeah, I, I, I actually, thought it was I like the other spell it. that you put on a building. <laughs> So it just no, you can do that. There's two, you're thinking of like there's two different things it does. Like one of its yeah. spells is you attach it to a building, and then it okay. gives you that vision for a certain amount the of time. Other the other spell it becomes a detector. Well, it scans anything in a certain area, but it has yeah. to be close to it. Okay. Uh, relatively yeah. close, as in like you know the the typical range. Yeah. So the Vikings would just kill it. Yeah, okay. the the Viking ghost is still good. Um, right. Cool. Anything else on the Oracle? Any other cool stories from Heart of the Storm action? I don't think so. Vibe has a cool story. I can tell on his face. He has one. Kibikaki opened up Oracle five games in a row, and I beat him five times. So, uh, Fair enough. So Oracle needs to be buffed. Very good. <laughs> That's <laughs> mean. You're just sneaking in a little brag there. <laughs> done, the nice. only time I've ever beat Kibikaki. <laughs> exactly. So, Took you two years. <laughs> <laughs> and, and him retiring for one of them. <laughs> I got it, man. Right. Time. So general consensus <laughs> is Oracle needs give to be buffed give, give a little bit. Give me like a week. Yeah, maybe. Is that, a week. is that what we've established? Yeah, but not I the mineral thing. So. And we really don't know about early game, so maybe not. I, I just think it dies way too fast, maybe. But it's so fast. I don't know. Are we going to hold off on a ultimate judgment of the thing? Of the thing? Needs, needs to be. I would, yeah. More, maybe. All right. Finally, our last unit that we're going to discuss, I think, yes, is going to be, we already discussed it a little bit, it's the Mothership Core. Cost 100-100, no supply requirement, you only need the Cybernex Core, build time 30, damage 25, DPS 1.25, range 7, shields life 100-150, movement speed 0.47. Before we get too uh, into a, a deep conversation about this, I was talking to Major about this ingenious build I had. 
in mind regarding this mothership core. <laughs> Another one of those builds we're going to coin by my name. And I know everyone cares about this so much. All right, you proxy mm -hmm. a Nexus in PvP. Minigun, are you hearing me on this? I'm hearing. I'm trying to help you win all these tournaments around the world, man, in Heart of the Swarm. Okay, you proxy a Nexus in their base in PvP, and you time it so that when the core is done, you can make your mothership core. And then behind it, you foregate. And then your mothership core gives you vision, and then your mothership core gets enough energy to do the attack it does, and then you win the PvP. But that's that's another day for a future metagame when people start doing it. Right now, let's talk about it. Mothership core, tell me your experiences. Good unit, bad unit, minigun, you're the Protoss player, let's start with you. Purify seems really weak. The attack you get, it's, it's pretty bad, at least from what I've seen. Now, Purify is... Which one? You're muted. 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 Cats. Muted. Are you kidding? Muted. What are we kidding? Like a, he, he's he's complaining about one of the abilities of a unit that costs no supply. It's almost free. Hey. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's it seems really weak. Okay. Which one is purify? It's it's the one that know, gives it's it's like attack. seventy damage a shot. It's really weak. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, uh, a, a Protoss did it it's against me. Weak. You just see it spinning, and you can actually see the range that it can attack. So you yes. can just stand like like one hex it, outside you know, of the range and just slowly walk back. And it did it help me. Off. Yeah, it helped me hold off a four gate hmm. when I use that. Cool. It's also good at killing overlords. Yes. That's what yeah. you were talking to oh. me. You like flew around yeah. and try to kill overlords. That thing is <laughs> slow though. Does it get slower the further away from yeah, the Yeah, man, it's like, it's like slow, slow overlord versus like oh a slow. Oh my god, it's orb. so slow. It's yeah. like it's, not, it's an epic funny. chase, man. <laughs> There's also <laughs> the thing where it re-energizes the energy. So like, one thing I thought of again, I know everyone cares about my thoughts, but um, if you're if you're hold, trying to hold this some sort of all in, and your sentry is almost, it's you have no force fields left. You can just. Do the mothership core little thing, and all your sentry has four force fields, right? Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Useful. So, it, the another good way to use it is like, uh, like Warcraft three style time portal. You just get your army in there really early because this is actually another game that Kibikaki and I played where I took a third base really fast. He went for like a pure sentry zealot composition. He went over to my third, and he got my army kind of out of position, and then he literally. Uh, he sent a few sentries ahead, I think, and then he sent the uh, the rest of his army following up behind the first sentries. And he blocked me out. He, like, made a little wall that blocked me out from def uh, defending my main ramp. And then he ran up my ramp, and he blocked me out of my main forever. And he killed my uh, my lair, and then he recalled out of my base. And that was actually pretty hard to win that game from that point on, but it was pretty interesting. He always sneaks it in there. That's fine. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> out of it. Sorry. It's uh, okay, Kibikaki. man. Like we're okay oh, with it. Like yeah. congratulations, you beat Kimikaki a lot. Like I'll give you that credit. Yeah. No, but it's it was pretty really smart though. Like he uses it as like a town portal. No, no, I see why he didn't want to come on the show because of vibes. I mean, imagine if he was here. Oh. If if any time a protozers are gonna come up, well, in my game against <laughs> Kimikaki. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, Did he okay. the final today, Drew? Oh, yeah, it was nothing. <laughs> Did they use any new units? Yeah, of course. This made Warhounds, and yeah, that, you should have thrown that in there. You know, like oh, yeah. I don't know Warhounds. Yeah, then I beat Stefan on the ladder. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Good job, Juby. Did you really beat Stefan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah there's only like 12,000 people watching. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I did. How long of a game I was it where you beat Stefano? It was, it was pretty long, like, like 30, 35 minutes. Oh, cool. Yes. How many points did you get on ladder when you beat Stefano? <laughs> Tell us, Drew. You beat uh, Stefano. Like, like, like 40? Promoted. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you get promoted. Check your Korean you account. Think, masters now. Now, yeah. wait, hold on. That's actually, I, have, I want to talk about that. So... Europeans like they're playing on the North American server. Is that is that what's happening? Yeah. Or is it all one server? Like, what's is it one server? Obviously, but yeah. the finals at the EG house though. I don't know. Oh, good point. Does anyone know if the European guys are getting lag or a lot of lag? I don't know. We should oh, ask yeah. a European. Because there, isn't that there like was a big deal. There was. Kinda? If they're not. Baby Knight was watching, but then he disappeared. Oh, Baby Knight. No, Baby Knight. 
Nice. Any Europeans in the chat who play the beta? Are you getting a lot of lag on the thing? Because, I mean, if the Europeans are getting lag, isn't that something we're talking about? Or, um... I played one guy who said he was lagging from Europe. Oh, okay. I, don't I think, who it was. uh... Because I, I know some will, European players absolutely refuse to play on the NA server because yeah. of the lag. So if that goes away, that's like amazing. You know, cross server play. Who knows? Like will be will we be able to play the Koreans on the same server? Uh, Chef, you haven't chimed in uh, too much about the mothership core. Any any insight? Any uh, innovative uh, strategies you can think of, or any time where you were trying to attack the Protoss and he did the little attack motion and it prevented you from winning the game. I heard Drury beats the final, but Chef beat day nine today, so. Ooh. Ooh. One up. Nice. What happened to Chef, anyways? Sean, why so here? quiet? I don't know, I'm tired. Let him talk, man. You're tired from, from owning day nine so many times? Hey, he beat me too. Oh. Chef, if, if you need to go at any time, mm. just let me know, and we can give you your shout outs and stuff. Was. that? I don't think I've seen day nine actually play for like a couple years was he good yeah was he fast yeah i mean he's not bad by any means well cool. i wonder how many smurf we can speculate forever like <laughs> that's like the many, one question everyone's yeah, had for like the past yeah. 15 years is how good is yeah. day nine yeah he had he had pretty good apm in brood war though oh he was amazing in brood us yeah. casters are good man look out I'm impressed. Cat's actually unmuted himself there. Yeah. Should we have a round of silence or a round of applause? Yeah. Everyone, everyone at home, please applaud. Cats. There it is. Okay. All right. Next up. Um, what do we got? Is that is that all? I think that's all the units. Well, uh, anything else? Anyone can think of that we didn't that we didn't really touch on as far as.